topic. Uh, uh, this is Dr. Vinod Singh from Gangaram Hospital, New Delhi, who has got uh, hypoxia, hypoxia on BB ECMO. So Dr. Singh has got uh, area of interest of ARDS ECMO and is president of AS uh, and past president ISCCM Delhi branch has published more than 20 papers in national internet journals. Dr. Singh, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a nice introduction. And thanks to Dr. Rao and Dr. Bala for inviting me to this conference. So I'm going to talk about managing hypoxia on renal venous ECMO. Uh, hypoxemia is quite common and it is quite challenging. Uh, for this, uh, put it like this, if you have just cannulated a patient, uh, for the VV ECMO hole and you put on the ventilator rest setting and you find that the oxygen saturation is at 2%. So what to do in this situation? Whether you are going to have some uh, uh, intervention to the ECMO machine, whether you are going to change the some ventilator setting or are you going to uh, put some fluid to the patients? So it is extent to the, uh, it is uh, problematic to the extent that sometimes even the most uh, uh, accomplished or an experienced person can get confused what to do. So in my talk, I'm just trying to find out and what is the, our plan and what we do in our situation. And, and uh, because there is no widely accepted saturation uh, described in ARDS, which saturation should be accepted and clinical tolerance for hypoxemia also depends upon the physiological status of the patient. Some patient tolerates hypoxemia very well, and some patient, even with the minor, minor hypoxemia, they will get bradycardia and rest also. So this is quite a tricky situation. Not only that, persistent hypoxemia and also hyperoxemia, if the PO2 is going high, it also is not helpful and sometimes uh, can increase the mortality to the patients. So a stepwise approach is important for such type of patients. And the ELSO guideline recommends that the saturation, accepted saturation should be 80 to 85%. Those patients who are on breast ventilator and any patient who has got a SVO2 or a, uh, or a uh, subclavian venous saturation, which is more than 70% indicates that the patient support is adequate. And persistent hypoxemia should be diagnosed in those patients who is on FiO200 on ECMO and, uh, and this, they are showing a oxygen saturation of 84%. And in such type of patients, the recommendation is that you should have a stepwise approach and you should have a logical and the physiological approach for managing such patients. If you look at why hypoxemia occurs in this type of uh, VV ECMO, because it is sometimes inevitable. If you look at the, how the oxygenator is connected, it is connected in a uh, series way. So the resultant oxygen level is the both as a combination of the ECMO blood flow as well as the native cardiac, native cardiac output. If you have a high native cardiac output, then there is a high chance that your patient will have hypoxemia. If you have a low ECMO blood flow, also there is a chance that your patient might have hypoxemia. So there are so many factors which can actually affect the patient's oxygen saturation. If you can see this, the uh, uh, deoxygenated blood, uh, which, is, uh, which is coming from the drainage cannula, it is going through the oxygenator and the final oxygen content is 14 or saturation is 100%. Once it goes to the right atrium and mixing takes place and the native cardiac output is also having in this area, the oxygen content decreased to 12.3 or saturation 88 and PO2 is 50. This is the accepted finding for patient who is on VV ECMO and you know that to have such type of situation, at least the least cardiac output which is uh, given by the ECMO blood flow should be the 60% of the total cardiac output. This is the principle uh, and how for the normally uh, putting VV, uh, VV ECMO in such patients. And the factors, if you look at here, those who are affecting the ECMO blood flow and those who are, uh, uh, if you look at the factors that uh, uh, oxygen carrying capacity in the uh, ECMO blood flow depends upon the FiO2 of the sweep gas flow, recirculation, ECMO blood flow and the intrinsic property of the membrane lung. We'll discuss later on all those things. And also the patient related uh, factors is the recirculation and the ratio of the ECMO blood flow to the cardiac output and also the mixed venous saturation which is coming to the oxygenation. These are the factors which affects the uh, oxygen content of the uh, uh, body which is going to the uh, peripheral circulation. 
this is a uh, actually this was published for four four five patients where they try to find out what should be the approach uh, for patient who is who has developed hypoxemia on the ECMO and what should be the uh, 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 how should it, how how should we approach for such type of patient and in conclusion they found that uh, therefore based on the pathophysiology of hypoxemia during baby ECMO the extra, uh, 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 we propose a stepwise approach to help uh, uh, to correct the hypoxemia in such patients and uh, uh, what are the factors which affects the uh, oxygen level? Most important is the access insufficiency. If your venous drainage or the uh, supply cannula has got some problem, you might have hypoxemia, high level of recirculation. If your patient has got a very high pulmonary shunt, they will also have uh, severe hypoxemia. If the cardiac output uh, is high or the ECMO blood flow is low, and the ratio to the allow cardiac, uh, cardiac output to the ECMO is low, then we'll have. Also, the oxygenator-related problem, if you have a, your failing oxygenator can have a problem with the oxygen saturation to those patients. All this can alone and in combination, they can have uh, uh, hypoxemia. The most uh, important or the common example in sepsis, if a patient has developed sepsis on the ECMO, they will have excess insufficiency, they will, might have high recirculation, they will have increased pulmonary stunt due to DIC or increased lung water, and also they will have a very high cardiac output. So you can see in septic shock patients, they will have multi-factorial causes of hypoxemia in such patients. So if you look at this case, a 26-year-old man with a severe ARDS due to influenza receiving VV ECMO, and the venous drainage was put in 25 French uh, uh, catheter, and with the supply with the 18 return cannula, while reviewing the uh, low saturation, you find the pH saturation is 80% and the patient has got hypoxemia. The first thing you roll out is the fresh gas flow, whether it has got a sufficient fresh gas flow, the blender is working fine and there is flow calibration is well. Uh, then you should go for next stage and you should, once you have, uh, find, try to find out whether my patient has got a sufficient access and sufficient flow is going to the patient or not because there are so many factors which can have insufficient flow and can cause hypoxemia because of the flow chattering and the flow insufficiency. And these can be due to a kinking of, of the cannula, it can be due to unstable circuit, uh, circuit flow. And the more appropriate evaluation is needed because this can lead to even death of the patient if you fail to recognize such things and that could be a tension pneumothorax, that could be a cardiac tamponade, that could be intra-abdominal hypertension, and that could be a cannula clot and malposition. So excess insufficiency should be the first part you should be excluding while you are evaluating the patient for hypoxemia. Once you have excluded the excess insufficiency, they can, then you, can liber, you have a liberty to increase the flow. And you can go up to six to seven liter of flow. Normal functioning oxygenator can improve the hypoxemia in such type of patient and your patient will be all right. But you'll have a nightmare, you have some problem. If you are, even you are increasing the flow, but you are not able to improve the oxygenation of the patient. So what to do in this situation? If the patient is still hypoxemic, then you go in for the, to check the pre-oxygenator, pre uh, um, um, you do and uh, check the ABG and if you find that if the patient's saturation is less than 60%, that indicates your patient's cardiac output is high and the oxygen consumption is high. If the high saturation is there, that tells you that your patient has got a high recirculation. It is important to diagnose at this stage because both have got different management. If your patient has got a recirculation, that means the oxygen saturation is high in uh, pre-pump pre area, and the classic sign is that the patient has a uh, lower SO2 and the high pre-oxygenated SpO2 or a saturation. And we can think that if the saturation is zero uh, percent, if the saturation is same, that means the pre-oxygenated and the SpO2, that the recirculation is zero percent, and if your saturation is uh, pre oxygenator saturation is equal to the post or the subclavian saturation, the recirculation is 100%. But usually it is in between somewhere and we can also uh, have, can calculate the amount of recirculation. 
or those patients who are receiving a two sites baby ECMO cannula like a femoral, uh, femoral general ECMO, you can have a, uh, a standard separation of 15 centimeter. If it is not there, there is a high chance of recirculation. There are certain other causes of recirculation like if you depend upon the pump speed, blood flow rates, intrathoracic and intracardiac already we have discussed the cannula size and the position and uh, also uh, 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 they are also link, a link to the uh, cannula orientation of the cannula. Um, if you have a recirculation the first thing you should see whether the cannula distance is 15 centimeter or more or not. If it is not that, you correct it. If you have done it, even the recirculation, then you have an option to go for a bicaval cannula. Or you can use an additional drainage cannula in this situation, or you can also have a, a manipulation of the reperfusion cannula, what we call it an X type of configuration. That can also be done. There are some case report which has handled the such type of recirculation. Now next is optimization of the ratio of the ECMO blood flow and the cardiac output because this is the other factor where you have a high cardiac output and hypoxemia. So for what to do for if this is the situation then you can go for a moderate hypothermia. You can use a beta blocker if the patient is not hypotensive. You can have adequate sedation and analgesia and uh, you can also have a uh, option to accept a lower oxygen saturation because if it is between 80 to 85 there's nothing to do and just accept a low oxygen saturation or you can have an option to increase the ventilator FiO2. So these are the factors which helps you to, co to combat if there is a cardiac output is high. This is one report where the person or the researchers has used two oxygenators and one is the standard other and other they have cannulated for the uh, other side of the femoral vein and again it had the oxygenated blood is going to the subclavian vein and once the patient is stabilized after 14 days if you can see in the uh, C they have again uh, the uh, the subclavian and the femoral has used as a drainage and the uh, the other the IJ has used as a uh, supply or return cannula at the time of weaning. So this is the other option where we can manage if your patient requires a very high cardiac output. Oxygenator failure is the important factor and if it is your oxygenator is not working properly if there is a lot of clot and if a normal pressure drop which is which should, be, should be less than 50 mm of HG if it has gone more than 100 this strongly suggests that you should go and change the oxygenator in such situation and a failing oxygenator should be replaced to optimize the oxygenation in such type of patients. Optimal hemoglobin level, it is quite controversial issue, what should be the HB level. The, uh, in critically ill patient, we all know that more than 7 gram per DL is sufficient to maintain the oxygenation in such patients. But also guidelines suggest that in ECMO patients, you should try to keep a near normal hematocrit. At least you should keep 10 or more than 10 uh, gram per DL hematocrit. So you can optimize the hemoglobin level to have a uh, better oxygenation. Prone positioning discussed a lot about the, in this conference and the most important factor in the prone positioning is that it decreases the shunt level and improves the oxygenation in such patients. And if you look at this report which was a retrospective study and they found that if you are ventilating a patient in prone position, there is a low mortality in those uh, patients who has compared to the supine position and the mortality is 34 versus 50 percent respectively and also they have very clearly uh, written that there is no extra complications of the prone position so this is the important options we should uh, we should always explore when we are facing hypoxemia it will have the potential to not only to improve the oxygenation but also to improve the mortality in such patients so for those patients, if we, our approach is if the patient's saturation is less than 85%, patient is ventilator and FiO2 is 1 in the ECMO, you have, you have uh, used, you have excluded the excess issue. The first thing you should find out whether the patient has got a recirculation. If the patient has got a high recirculation, which is more than 10%, usually hypoxemia occurs if it is more than 30%. Reposition the cannula, okay, you can use the double lumen, you can go for extra dentist cannula. If your patient's cardiac output is low, you can improve the ECMO, uh, cardiac output is high, you can increase the ECMO blood flow or you can have the option to increase, improve the blood ox, uh, HB level to improve the oxygen delivery. 
and uh, you can also have the option to reduce the oxygen requirement by sedation, neuromuscular blockade and using the hypothermia and uh, also you can use beta blocker. Lastly, you can go for a prone position if these are not working and the cardiac contractility is low and you can have a, another drainage cannula or you can consider to change the patient to the VA mode. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. <laughs>